That's a thing. Sorry. Hey, everyone. We're the Renegades. Uh, that intro was uh, <laughs> that intro was brought to you by... Uh, actually, I probably won't even say the... Uh, I'll provide a link to the original <laughs> down below. Because if I say that, I'll probably get like... A flame war. Uh, yeah, and that's not what I want. The intro's funny. That's it. That, Just that's, everyone that's, calm that's down. The only thing... That's one of the biggest things we found about that. But... <laughs> Okay, Cinema Sins, Everything Wrong with Toy Story 2 in 14 minutes or less. Okay, your opinions on the first Toy Story? Good movie. Really, uh, I think so too. Good movie. Really good. Um, it kind of it kind of set the stage for a lot of future animation too. I mean uh, that. Well, yeah. I mean, and it, it still holds up really well. Yeah. yeah. The, the only part of it that doesn't hold up as well are the humans, or mm-hmm. the human beings. The human beings are a little dead it's just like you know the especially like the baby you know um what's her name molly mm-hmm. uh the the do- uh andy's sister uh like the baby in this one is just a little bit off-putting because mm-hmm. she because it's it's it says i've heard some people the uncanny valley sure yeah you know, it's it's just like when does when does kind of like the the taxi driver in total recall where he's just like the yeah. weird rope yeah yeah and do you need assistance? And it's just like weird mouth movements. It's just like, uh, I yep. don't know how to feel about this. But that's just like how it was. It's just like the baby was dead-eyed, and I was just like, wow. And I, I didn't notice it when I was a kid, but as an adult, I was just like, whoa. And then as the movies went on, it got better and better and better. Yep. And now they're pretty much able to do humans, you know, even with motion capture. Mm-hmm. I mean, motion capture still impresses the hell out of me. You know, how they're able to do faces, Mm -hmm. you know, face recognition and everything. I think it's wonderful how they're able to do that. Um, But anyway, uh, Toy Story 2, um, I think, is just as good as the first one. That's how I feel. I mean, I know there are people out there who will always say, oh, no, the first one's untouchable. uh, No, I can get behind that. Yeah, I I love the first one so much. It has a special place in my heart. The second one, when it was released... I like when I when I was a kid I liked it more because it had more to it it had a lot more in it and that's what a sequel needs to do a sequel needs to grow a sequel need the, the characters need to age in which they did and just like the series carried on in the third one you know the characters got older they aged and and you know things happened in that that I'm still a little sad about I'm just, I, I I watched the third one and I cried like a baby um, second one though second one I thought was really well done and <clears throat> I and as I've gone on I don't see it as superior to the first one I see it just as good and I and if you ask me I think that's that's pretty much ideally how I how I hold these films mm-hmm. um, how, about you, how about you I can get behind that the third one man that was like depressing it was they're all like holding hands in a furnace it's like oh, what am I hey, it's like spoilers or wait no you think it's been long enough six years yeah Okay. I mean, come on, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind that. But seriously, it's like, come on. It's like, man. I was like, what movie am I watching here? Yeah, I, I, I can get behind that. I, I've, I, when, when I was, when that happened, I was just like, oh no, this, this can't be it. No. And lo and behold, miraculously, out of nowhere, and it was just like, whoa. I, 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 I didn't realize how heavy-hearted I was about these characters. And then that happened, and I was just like, I don't want anything bad to happen. Uh, okay, so Toy Story 2 uh, deepened the bond between the toys and Andy and everything, and uh, I, I'm just interested to see what Toy Story 2, what CinemaSins will find wrong with it. Will I agree? Will I disagree? We shall see. So here we go. Forty-five seconds of logos again. Mm-hmm. Awesome! Did Disney buy DC as well? Is it Superman? 
even though this movie is great, like a solid A, that doesn't change the fact that it's the third best Toy Story film. Super Aww. short fluff sequel finds time for over three goddamn minutes of imaginary Buzz Lightyear video game adventure bullshit. Seriously, Buzz breathes like a discount Darth Vader, and he's white too? I know Gary Reinstrom is a big part of the sound of this movie, but damn, dude, how many times are you gonna go to that Star Wars well? Hey, this'll be the first year I miss cowboy camp, all because of my stupid hat! Woody has lost his hat. Has anyone checked with that f***ing prankster shark? <laughs> boy who wrote that would take you to camp with or without your hat. Does he have any reason to think he can't go to camp without the hat? Because if not, Woody needs a psychiatrist more than he needs Andy. Hey, yeah. where'd you find it? Well, that's the bad news. <laughs> So uh -oh. wait, did Slink steal the hat back from the dog and then manage to outrun said dog? Because you know Slink is a slinky <coughs> with very poor motor skills, right? <coughs> okay, have a good weekend. I see the humans in this house continue to give the toys extremely helpful warnings before anyone walks into a room and has their world change forever. Five minutes. Hmm. It would take 15 minutes bare minimum to set up all these army men. That's probably the joke they're making, but f it. Five minutes is five minutes. <laughs> Somehow this hasn't happened before now. Also, a small tear will somehow mean Andy can't take this toy he's been taking to cowboy camp for years to cowboy camp. Candyland, Mousetrap, Twister, Guess Who, Life? Where's the fucking shoots and ladders, asshole? <laughs> Andy's mom has had some work done, no? She looks nothing like she did in the last movie is what I'm saying. You know, I feel like Andy continued his love of Woody simply because the first movie demanded a happy ending. This kid would have moved on from Woody two weeks after they moved into the new house, if that. Woody drops his dead arm, but then also has a perfect view of Andy getting into the Ah, Super Nintendo! Let's play some Bomberman right f***ing now! You know, if you're gonna make a joke about cousin AJ Joe Jim Bob writing a book about the real, real big trucks, you might want to make that thing 300 pages lighter. You know <laughs> Nearly every board game in this stack is also a movie with the same name. That Guess Who movie really went off the rails when it came to adapting the source material. Huh. I sinned a whole bunch of stuff, and the whole thing turned out to be a dream sequence. But the movie is a dickhead for spending its first 12 minutes on video game footage and dream sequences. Also, even toys have disturbing dream sequences. <laughs> now, what if this happened while Andy was in the room? Nah, she just That's told fine. him that to calm him down, and then put me on the shelf. Yeah, but you guys are living toys, right? Why have you never made your presence known since you were put on the shelf? Does the shelf have some sort of magical properties we aren't aware of? No one could hear me. Yeah, your squeaker is broken, but not your voice. Yard sale! All the toys freak out about a yard sale sign the mom is hammering into the front lawn, but I'm much more concerned about a mother who opens a yard sale on her property without even so much as a hint about which toys her son is willing to part with. And while I'm at it, how convenient is it that Andy's not home right now? Okay, boy, to the yard sale! Yeah! What? what? That dog understands English? Or you already taught at the command for to the yard sale. I mean, I can suspend my disbelief with the best of them, but you're stretching it here, man. These toys move in the presence of humans so damn often it's a wonder they it's ever the, even try to pretend Apache they're not hideaway move. Toys. Back to Andy's room. After all that trouble hiding, Woody will now ride the back of a dog in full view of anyone who cares to look up. Super well-trained toy-friendly dog is utterly clueless when his best toy friend falls off in the front yard because the script called for conflict. Perhaps the least believable thing about any of the Toy Story movies is that Al from Al's Toy Barn would be lurking at this exact yard sale at this exact temporary moment when Woody finds himself trapped, and that Woody falling on a table would accidentally trigger his voice prompt, which is the only reason Al even found out he was here. I mean, goddamn. Oh, he's stealing Woody. Al, who is a known local celebrity featured in tons of commercials, thinks he can steal Woody no problem right after being a pushy bastard about buying it. And don't give me that he dresses like a chicken stuff either because his face is clearly visible. Buzz's hand somehow punches this trunk open, which I'd normally see in, but I'm gonna take this in back for all the detail the animators put in to show scratches all around its keyhole. A nice touch indeed. He didn't have a beard like that. Did you guys see this dude or not? Huh? How does a ZZ Top beard ever become part of the equation? The kidnapper was bigger than that. Oh, picky, picky, picky. Just... Slink would be amazing at cinema sins, but Ham would be amazing at being our critics. I can't believe I have to drive all the way to work on a Saturday. This asshole dresses in his chicken costume before driving to the commercial shoot. If Al comes bursting back into the room right now, these living toys are all busted as hell. There's no way they can all get back into place in time. Not to mention how many styrofoam peanuts they've strewn around the room at this point. But toys play dead when humans are around thing really loses its luster when you just script the humans out of the way whenever you need it. Say hello to the prospector! Do you get the sense that Joan Cusack signed up for this because she thought it was the sequel to Toys? Oh wait, nobody would do that. Stupid question. <laughs> Why the prodigal son has returned. You know he's evil because the voice is Sideshow Bob. Oh. Wow. True. <laughs> what the hell? Why does Collector Owl Dude have priceless Woody magazines strewn across the floor? Answer, he doesn't. He just made a cool shot, so they did it. Every single one of these tapes is episodes four through six. Nothing, Prospector. I reckon we 
we ought to get out of here. They've been sitting here dumbfounded watching TV for hours. And even if Al somehow ended up doing a hundred takes on his chicken soup commercial across the street, there's no way these f***ers knew that was happening. So they should be caught dead to rights as living toys by all measure of logic and sanity. They are, at the very least, some of the stupidest toys to ever forget to pretend not to be alive. Now it's on to the museum! Museum? <laughs> and now you learn the movie set this whole record player thing up just for a cheap record scratch gag at the sound of something shocking. Al's coming! <gasps> Go! Oh, go on, oh. Jesse! Yes, go! And somehow clean up all those styrofoam peanuts on the floor, and put away the videotapes, and turn off the TV, and... Jesus, this is hopeless, isn't it? We have a friend in need. And Unnecessary patriotism. And that concludes our broadcast day. What? Bullsh**. TV channels haven't been signing off this way since decades <laughs> before this f***ing movie takes place. But That's whatever true. makes the parental nostalgia bell go ring-a-ding-ding, right? I see that cheese all over his fingers, but how did it get there? This bowl is completely full. He fell asleep before he had time to eat any of it. I'm blind as Woody to have not seen any of this shit prior to stepping on the first cheese puff. <gasps> Bullseye! Just like in real life, horses are so worried about being helpful they don't realize how much noise they're making. Wait, well, lucky Bullseye decided to wake up and join Woody then, because I don't think he could have climbed the couch without it. Let's just say Al wakes up now, by chance. Is there some kind of toy court where Woody would face charges of failing to pretend to not be alive? Bullseye ignores hundreds of actual cheese puffs in order to lick the dust off the fingers of a dude I'm pretty sure didn't even eat any himself. <laughs> yep, toys can smell. Who knew? No, officer, I swear! Somehow Pixar thought this would be hilarious dialogue for a suddenly awoken creepy guy to say. No idea where they were going with that, but it's creepy as hell. Super serious toy collector dude pays no heed to his cheesy fingers while Not picking up a Not the cheesy fingers. Door. What? You think I did that? Woody accuses Jesse of turning on the TV when he tried to take back his arm, but somehow she didn't see Stinky Pete do it. Why are there spikes on this road when there's no boom barrier blocking it? Ah! Massive miracle. Also, apparently no one notices these cones moving by themselves. Road that was pretty much abandoned a minute ago will decide to be the hardest level <laughs> frogger ever so the heroes have a challenge. Also, I'm pretty sure these toys caused a 14 car accident where many, many people were killed. We just didn't see it because the movie is rated G. Mm -hmm. This pipe fell off a truck that had to haul all sorts of momentum to stop, and yet it rolls like a gang of nerdy guys are pushing it uphill. Toy <laughs> Pixar dude turns out to be the old man from the Pixar chest short, which oh, I true. suppose thrills and delights me to no end, right? <sighs> You can't rush art. He seems e extra horrible? cynical in this video. Open and working, but the closed sign is still in the window. Someone didn't do their job all the way. These toys all just saw a human worker come in here, but now they're spreading out just openly wandering around shouting Woody as though no humans could be nearby. While I admit it would be weird to see an aisle full of other yous, Buzz already experienced the whole I'm not unique and I'm a toy thing last movie. Overstock. This raises an interesting philosophical question, though. At what point do toys in this universe become self-aware? You know, they make it so you can't defeat Zerg unless you buy this book. It's extortion, that's what it is. Wait until you get to the era of DLC and in-game uh, uh, You got it good right now, trust me. This thing has working gas and brake pedals. Get the fuck out of here, Moby. These guys are in a car uh, driving around a toy car. store where there are no helpful warnings oh, from his mom that someone's about to come into the room. Well, Moby thinks that if it swaps in a second buzz in place of Woody, then I'll overlook the fact that it's literally repeating an entire scene from the first movie. You know how the rest of this goes at this point, right? Moby is wrong. These Barbies know how to party. One question, though, why didn't they let any of the Ken dolls join the bash? They'd be in the same aisle, right? Also, no other toy sold in this store is stupid enough to be awake at this point, but all the Barbie stuff is having a pool party right now? What do toys do in the age of security cameras, by the way? I feel sad for this Barbie because she is cooking a steak that will never get cooked enough. Back in 1995, <laughs> short-sighted retailers did not order enough dolls to meet demand. Disney complaining about not getting enough money. Also, I guess they've more than made up for it by overbuying on the next go-around. See how that works? Tiny Tim can still get his operation after all. Oh. No, if this guy was the true collector he's been made out to be, he'd know better than to put his greasy fingers all over the priceless toy just to take an obscene number of posed photos in order to then sell said priceless toy. Oils, dust, potential damage, this guy is ignoring all the obsessive collector basics. It's like printing my own money. What serious toy collector or serious eBay seller would take and use Polaroids of the merchandise? Sure, it looks better for this shot to have him holding physical pics, but it's dumb as hell. On my way to the office to fax them to you! And he's going to fax them to the buyer! Take too many pictures, use Polaroid Instant Film, and then fax results! This guy has never sold a high-value item in his life. And somebody loved me. Yeah, this... Damn, this scene's going to appeal to my soft side and make me remove sins, isn't it? Every one of these transitions suggests this yep. girl outgrew her love of horses for stuff like makeup and music. But what's going to outgrow her love of being a stereotype? Huh. Huh. This suggests that Emily grew up during the 60s and 70s, what with the record player and the posters. But she has a poster for a concert at Pixar Studio for the Lemurs on November 25th, 1999, the day after the release of this movie. 
Something's fishy about that. I don't know what. Man, this donation center is out in the middle of f***ing nowhere. Buzz just managed to escape at the perfect time and sees Rex's tail hanging out of this bag so he knows where to go next. Buzz somehow knew these particular toys in this order would lead to him flying toward the door. Zerg toy just happened to be mixed in with the bargain bin. I guess because no one likes to buy the Buzz Lightyear villain, but no one wants to buy Buzz Lightyear either, according to the shelves in this place. Imposter Buzz is able to pull this vent out. You know, I think that Buzz owl went to his head. These idiots still haven't figured out they've got the wrong Buzz. Elevator ex machina. Actually, Buzz then decides not to use the elevator but then, yeah, elevator ex machina. Hello, that looks like a thing I can't see since my eyes are covered. Wait a minute, are you <laughs> saying Mr. Potato Head's eye works even when it's not attached to him? This guy was blind yeah. in the last movie when they knocked out his eyes, so you're Filthy guilty for Pixar. Pixar. You're a child's right. plaything. You are a toy! Symmetry. You got a friend in me. Retro version of Randy Newman's song from the first movie gives Woody the idea he needs to advance the plot. I thought the guy did a really professional job fixing Woody, but apparently he can just scrape the paint off with a couple of swipes. Right, no one heard or saw him exit the box and walk over here and do this. Totally. Also, Stinky Pete tightens the screws on this vent, the only method Andy had for escape, but didn't do this any time earlier when he knew everyone was asleep. Buzz and gang react to Zerg before Andy Zerg is even visible. Zerg took his sweet ass time finding Buzz, didn't he? Although maybe he had complications involving getting to this floor, but I'm still sending it because of this perfect timing. This should mean Mr. Potato Head lost all his body parts to the elevator shaft, but no, nope, it doesn't. You killed my father! No, Buzz. I am your father. No! I already know. <laughs> so this line of toys is a serious ripoff of Star Wars, from the story to their sound effects. I know this is just another Newman, Dennis Nedry character Wayne Knight is playing here, and he's evil and dumb, but can he seriously not hear the slinky behind him? I finally defeated Zerg! Rex thinks pushing the toy Zerg off an elevator is the same as defeating him in the video game. And as a guy who actually killed a number of mother brains in real life, I can tell you that my inability to beat them in video games left my frustration intact. Huh? Mr. Potato Hat somehow stomps these heavy double doors from closing, which is some bullshit. Pizza, anyone? Pizza truck from the first movie, Ex Machina. Yes. Strangers from the outside. I didn't realize until rewatching this how much lip service this movie pays to the first one. Yeah. I guess I should be glad that the boys are somehow finding a way to drive this car. But this really goes against all the rules and general stuff they needed to worry about in the first movie. And plus, it's toys driving a car somehow. Coordination between all these idiot toys on their first time driving makes me kind of angry. Drive angry. Oh, there he is. Right. How did Al park his car and get to check in so fast? How are Buzz's feet protruding through this pet carrier's floor in order to propel he used it along the laser to cut a hole in the bottom. Uh, bark, 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 bark. Bark, 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 bark. This works. It's not a Pixar movie unless there's a giant factory or a maze of conveyor belts to navigate. Pixar goes for that classic Butte joke, which is something Beavis and Butthead Do America did two years earlier, and everyone did whenever Butte, Montana was founded. It's amazing what transpires to make Woody cars. look exactly the same when he finally gets back into the arms of Andy. Toy Story 2 steals the flashing camera weapon from Rear Window and that Itchy and Scratchy Land episode of The Simpsons. Toy Horse True. with no real hooves will catch up to this gas-powered vehicle, American Airlines. Wow, <laughs> Toy Horse was running at the same speed as an about-to-take-off jumbo jet. I'm not even mad, that's amazing. These toys put great faith in the fact that Andy's mom won't find it weird when Andy mentions this to her. Oh wow, new toys! Yeah, a horsey and a girly doll. What's not to love when you like exclusively dude toys and only use Bo Peep when you need a female for Woody to save? Welcome to Al's Toy Barn. It's good that Al approved an ad where he was so sad we could see the result of his comeuppance. Mr. Shock looked in the toy box and found me an extra squeaker. Which means there's another toy with its squeaker completely ripped out. Either that or this toy comes with a spare squeaker of some sort, which I'm not buying for one minute. When did all these Barbies make it into the household? Andy's little sister is like two years old. She's not playing with multiple Barbies yet, is she? <laughs> Woo! I don't remember eating that! Cut. Uh, no, I can't. Now, let's think about this for a second. This is an animated movie about toys coming to life when humans aren't around. But these outtakes tell us they're actually actors pretending to be toys that only come to life when the humans aren't around. Or oh, behind-the-scenes toys are filming this. No, it's humans filming living toy actors, all right. I think my existentialism just threw me <laughs> a left uppercut. Isn't this exciting, Heimlich? Pixar accidentally puts ants in Toy Story 2. DreamWorks is going to be pissed when they find out. <clears throat> Now we're gonna take some pictures and we're gonna have another little sip of wine and we're gonna take some more pictures. That's Jeez, super creepy. No. Super creepy. No. Dang it, Al, in your toy barn. Space, a final frontier. <laughs> Maniacal <laughs> laugh. Maniacal laugh. <laughs> He's back? Hey, everybody! And he's back! Guess who's back? Mouse presents the March of War. Mirror. Mirror! Uh, football practice. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. This is our spot. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> no, 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 listen, you got to give me the time. I did a test run on this thing. It took me 20 minutes. I thought it maybe <laughs> pushed 18, Bart. but you got to give me at least 15 minutes. Give me the 15 minutes. Bart Simpson, <laughs> the spirited little scamp who twice foiled my evil schemes and sent me to this dank, urine-soaked hell hole. <laughs> my name is Darth Vader. <laughs> I am an extraterrestrial from the planet Vulcan. Vulcan. The red zone has always been for loading and unloading. There's never stopping in a white zone. Don't tell me which zone is for stopping and which zone is for loading. <coughs> Don't start with your white zone shit again. <clears throat> I think I'm getting the black lung, Bob. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Okay. For them to say that this is the second best Toy Story, or the, th or the third best Toy Story out of the three Toy Story movies, I don't know. I, I consider, okay, if any of them, okay, I'll say this. Don't get mad at me, Internet. The first two, I think, are tied for number one, and number three, just below it. I'm talking about, like, the most microscopic amount right below the first two. That's just me, though. I mean, does that mean I think that the third one is a horrible movie? Hell no! But in terms of the impact, in, ter in terms of the overall impact that it had on me, the first two films, I just felt, nailed it. Mm -hmm. And the third one, I was a bit older, and I could understand some of the things that were happening, but at the same time, it just didn't, it, it didn't have the, the same amount of impact. Don't get me wrong, the, the dramatic parts, I loved to death. But I, I don't know. It that's just me, guys. That's how I felt. God, I just I just I just hated a toy. I to, now to everyone on the internet, I hate a Toy Story movie. I hate I hate Toy Story three. I don't. Jeez. Wait, have they been saying that previously, or you just think know. that's what no, they're no, gonna? That's what they're that's going, just to what they're gonna that's gather. What they're going to draw from this that I hate Toy Story three. If you're just tuning in, you skipped ahead. Yeah, Nate totally hates Toy Story three. Stop it. He's Damn like, it. oh, that movie sucked. That pink bear and like Andy goes to college and oh, it's stupid. No, that's he's like that all the time. Shut up! Out. No, no, yeah. I'm not. At least like <laughs> minimum five times he mentions how much he hates Toy Story three. No, <laughs> shut up! See, shut up! People are actually gonna believe me though. That's gonna become a running joke. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. People are gonna be in the comment section like, hey, <laughs> by the way, this is Caleb. Uh, video starts at. Three minutes and 42 seconds, and uh, Nate, you're a total jerk for hating Toy Story 3. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's how it's going to go. That's pretty much how it's going to go. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so my, my deal, guys, is that um, the Pixar movies, um, the, the only real bad turn that they had were the, car, were the movies set in the Cars universe. I never even watched any of them. I the first Cars movie is tolerable. The second one is just oh so bad, and then pl and then the two Planes movies were just as bad. I I super hated it actually because I when Planes came out I was still working at a big box retail store and it, uh, we were just flooded no. with all of this junk oh, trying to that's promote all they and were. sell they it. Were merchandising ve vehicles. They weren't anything else. And we did like we really didn't sell that much of it, and it's such a pain. So much. They were stuff. merchandising vehicles. That's all they were. They had no, nothing to contribute to the art form as a whole. They were just marketing vehicles that Disney was just like, oh, kids will buy the toys. No, they didn't. By that, by the time the planes movies came out, kids were smart enough to know um, this is stupid. I don't want to buy these anymore, Mom. Don't buy those for me for Christmas. And, okay, ever since John Lasseter has taken over at Disney in terms of, the, uh, he's the chief creative officer uh, at Disney, and ever since then, they've only been going up in terms of quality. Not just Pixar's anime, not just Pixar, mm -hmm. but Disney yep. as a whole. I mean, Disney's animation crew. I mean, you got Pixar and you got, people assume that they're the same, they're not. Pixar is its own separate entity within the Disney Empire. The Disney Empire has its own animation team, and for the longest time they were in a rut after night after Tarzan. I mean, they did the Emperor's New Groove, but uh, but a lot of people freaking still, love that movie. Yeah, 
but still, people were just like, "Oh, the, oh, it's 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 bad." No one, no one. <laughs> I, I just super love that movie. I, I do was, too. I, love I it thought it was hilarious. Movie. And and then after uh, after a set amount of time, uh, John Lasseter became the chief creative officer, and now we're in like the second Disney Renaissance. I mean, starting from uh, I think it was Bolt. Uh, did Bolt come out? Yeah, I think Bolt came out before uh, before the the uh, uh, Princess and the Frog. I believe that's right. And then the Princess and the Frog, Tangled, and Fro- at Frozen. You know where I'm going. Wreck It Ralph, and now Zootopia. God, Zootopia was so good, man. Did you ever have a chance to watch it? Mm-mm. Holy mackerel! I did not expect it to be that good, but. So far as I've seen, Disney really can't go wrong. I mean, because they've handled all of their properties really well. You know, they've had a few missteps with Pixar, but eh, that's all well and good. How they've handled the Marvel films. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had a misstep with uh, with Aven- the second Avengers movie. And I know you're going to hate me for saying <laughs> that. This is my opinion. Get off my ass. <laughs> and the comment section has been unleashed. No, I know. It's like... Why does they keep saying it? It's my opinion. That does not mean that your opinion on that film is invalid. It just means this is how I feel. Dang it, To Nate, me, it was, was a sidestep. I was holding it together when you were hating on Toy Story 3, but you can't lump Avengers 2 in there with them. Oh, God. That, I will. I will. That's the last straw. No, 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 no. I, I don't hate Avengers 2. To me, it was just the film that we did not, the film that we weren't expecting and the film that we shouldn't have gotten. Instead, Captain America, Captain America: Civil War is the Avengers film that we that we deserved, because truth be told, it only had the even though it its villain was not a super villain, he caused more damage to this to the Avengers than anyone else, mm-hmm. because the sna- it is uh, I hate I, I hate quoting another film series. It's the slow knife between it's the slow knife that sneaks in between the ribs that causes the most damage versus the versus the full frontal assault. You know what that movie is, right? Yeah, but I just thought about the parody. The oh, first off, let me think. <laughs> you sucked my. <laughs> so you're saying there's a button, and if I touch it just right, there'll be an explosion. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, I remember when we reacted to that. That was that guy was guy with a crab on your face. And I haven't showered in like two or three days. Really soaks in the flavor. <laughs> That video was hilarious. <laughs> Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes is hilarious. Uh, but I, I was just gonna say, man, I I really love I really love everything that Marvel that that, they've, that Marvel's been doing with it, with Disney. Pixar's been doing with Disney and Star Wars. The Star uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Guys, you can say the Force Awakens sucks. That's your opinion to have. Me, I loved it. It was a reintroduction to a franchise that has long been dormant in mediocrity. I mean, yeah, it's because they had decades that they had, uh, have, you know. They had to make up for all those lost decades where George Lucas wanted to tell his version of, uh, of a Shakespearean tragic love story. And he failed. And I hope to God that Disney realizes the marketability and the true power that that story holds and they do it right they go back and they remake the original the the prequels and they do it right because that's what remakes should be remakes should not be rehashes of great stories they need to be they need to be they need to be retries on properties that had missteps that's what needs to be i mean okay Uh, i went off the rails there for a bit i i where am i at right now they've seen the show well, yeah, but anyway, guys, I've rambled enough. Uh, if you've managed to stay with us this long, how the hell have you tolerated this? <laughs> I don't know, but if you but if you've sat through with us this whole time and uh, you have enjoyed what you've seen here, let us know. Tell us what you think in the comments down below. Also, uh, check the description for the original video through Cinema Sins. And uh, also check out the uh, description for all, all of our various other endeavors. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh, well, until next time, anyone, every, uh, sorry, got a little bit of a, got a little bit of indigestion there. Um, so until next time, everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in. My name is Nate. Micah. And we will see you later. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.